Dysfunctional. Oh. Hello ladies and gentlemen, Vaughn here with Dysfunctional Films, and in this video I'm going to show you how you can do your very own invisibility effect with an After Effects. Now, this effect isn't like everyone else's invisibility effect, it's a little bit more personalized and unique, and I, I figured out a way to make it, I don't know, more like Hollywood style invisibility, where you can technically see your character, or uh, he's visible to the camera per se, but not necessarily to your audience, or to your, uh, your characters in the story. So, um, yeah, this is how it's done. I've, uh, I've worked to figure it out, and I think I have something here that uh, a lot of people will like. So without further ado, let's get started. So the first thing you want to do is you want to input your footage. Uh, when you're shooting, you want to get two pieces of footage. You want to get a clean plate, so that will be your background, and the footage of your, uh, your subject, object, person, whatever, in front of a green screen. So we have Dylan here. He's one of our guys from Dysfunctional Films. You've seen him before in our videos. Uh, he's here in front of a green screen, and we have uh, our clean plate footage. And we just we were short man, so instead of using the pop up green screen, we just use a normal green screen. Uh, but yeah, that's that's the setup for the. Uh, that's what you need to do in advance. Uh, make sure your camera doesn't move. You want to make sure the lighting is consistent between the scenes. Uh, here we, I think we only had two lights working, one on this side, one on this side, and uh, everything else was just pretty standard room or daylight. So uh, keep that in mind uh, when you're shooting this. It's basically like you would shoot any other invisibility effect per se because you still need the green screen or find a way to cut your person out. You don't need to use a green screen per se, but uh, I highly recommend you do. So what we're going to do is we're going to drag our clean plate into, uh, I didn't take a picture or a shot of video, about like 10 seconds or so, which is plenty for what we're using or what we're doing. Uh, we're just going to drag our uh, clean plate into a new composition. And now we have a composition the size of our footage. And now uh, it's just the footage there. Looks like there's a bit of a lighting change. Might, this might be the camera adjusting or just could be After Effects. Uh, but that's not a big deal. I'm not worried about that. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm gonna rename this actually. So I'm going to double click. Nope, that's not what you want to do. Uh, I'm going to right click. I'm going to click, type in rename. I'm going to type in BG for background so I know exactly what it is. I'm going to lock that layer. Can't touch it. Not going to do anything with it. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring in my green screen footage right on top of that. And boom, we have Dylan here looking like, uh, <laughs> ha, uh, looking like that. That's amazing. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to key him out. Uh, that's important. But before you do, let's, uh, let's mask him. Let's do some masking first. Uh, so we want to go see where he's at. His, so he does go out of the green screen here, and that might be a bit of a problem. But by this point in time, he's invisible. So I'm not going to really worry too much about it. Uh, ideally, you would want to make sure he doesn't leave his green screen. You have enough area, surface area of the green screen to cover as much as possible. But uh, we're not going to worry about that. We're just going to mask around as much as possible. His hand goes about this far out. I'm pretty sure he doesn't enter this region up here. Let me just scrub through. Yeah, so we can we can do some pretty good masking here. So I'm going to I'm gonna do right up onto this edge just because I know his hand gets that far out. And we're going to gonna mask and we're just gonna go something like this and like this and like that and uh, just like that boom so we masked them out and there's a green screen awesome so we're gonna get our key light effect or this is After Effects is built in green screen if you don't already know it's key light 1.2 with drag and drop and we're gonna select our uh, screen color here and we're gonna make it green bang look at that look at that face uh, so we have Dylan keyed out, and we want to refine this mask a little because you're getting a little bit of the green screen. Ideally, you want as smooth as possible to get rid of all these wrinkles, and you can light it more. Uh, you want to have like clamps or whatnot. But if you look at our original footage, we didn't have any clamps. We were we were running short in time, uh, just because I wanted to put the deuce tutorial really badly. Uh, so uh, yeah, there's those are stuff that can be solved uh, during the shooting process, but uh, it's not too bad to clean up in uh, After Effects. So what you want to do is we want to change our view from final result, and we want to go into, uh, where is it? Our, whoa, what am I looking for? Screen mat. There you go. And you'll see black and white. White is what will be seen. Black is what will be removed. And uh, so you want to get as much as the the white out as possible. So that's what we did our masking here, so that won't show up. Uh, but we still have some like white areas here that we don't necessarily want. So if you go down into the drop down our screen matte options. We have a clip black and clip white as well as screen softness. We have a whole bunch of options here that we can play with. I'm going to bump up this clip black and as you can see it just really starts to refine our matte a lot. We've got rid of a lot of those uh, artifacts outside there but we still have, we're getting some inside 
removing some of Dillum. Uh, we don't want to do that just yet. Uh, we're going to drop down and clip white. And uh, this is basically almost adding like contrast to our mat per se. Uh, that's the idea. That's how you should think about it. And uh, we've done quite a bit here. We still have some over here, but you know what? I am not going to worry about that at all. That's a waste of time. And we're just going to go into our... You can mask that out if you really want to, but I really don't care. Um, and go back to final results, and bam, we got Dillum there. He looks like he's supposed to be there, because technically he was. Well, not for long. So uh, we have him looking down, and uh, this is where the effect really comes into to play here. So uh, that was basic green screen for you. Now we do invisibility. So we have Dillum here. He's doing some some gyrating and uh, I told him to do like a body wave up because I wanted to do an effect where it kind of like I went up like that but uh, it, that's a little bit more it's hard to get it to look real uh, you want to do something that's not necessarily linear because linear is not real nothing in this world is perfectly straight so I tried to figure out a way but I, I, I just thought how about I just have him explode when he pops his chest boom right there and then he'll explode and, and go invisible so uh, what we're going to do is we're going to create a, couple, a duplicate of our layer. We're actually going to rename this layer first. We're going to call this, uh, just call it person for now, so we know. It's our person. And we're going to duplicate this so we have two people. <laughs> uh, I'm just going to hide that for a second. And I'm going to get a, 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 a levels adjustment. That's what I'm looking for, a levels adjustment and drop that on top. And I might as well just get a tint and draw it on top as well. So we have this black and white footage. We're going to put that before our levels, actually. And we're going to we're gonna try to make this as contrasty as possible. We want as much white and dark spots as possible. Uh, we want it to be very contrasty footage, and you'll see why in a moment. Uh, so I'm just going to tweak it here. Your footage will be obviously different. You don't have to have this. But I'm just going by eye here, and this looks pretty good uh, for what I want. And I'm going to rename this... I'm going to call this our uh, uh, map. This is our map. And I can actually turn that footage off now. Uh, so now we're back to Dylan looking like an idiot with color. And we're going to create a new layer. Uh, Dylan's not an idiot. Only when he wants to be. Uh, but we're all dysfunctional here, so that's not important. Uh, we're going to get a displacement map effect. Displacement map. And we're going to drag that on top of our adjustment layer here. And you're going to see something happening here. If I were to turn off our person layer, you can see a little bit of nothing. Uh, but if I select our uh, displacement map layer and I set it to our map, uh, and I crank up our horizontal displacement, lo and behold, Dillum is revealed through all this. Now what you want to do is make sure wrap pixels around is selected so it kind of fills out these areas. Um, but that will only do so much to help you uh, clean up uh, and vertically, uh, maybe a little bit like that. So you almost want to get it so that way, uh, ideally when you shoot this, you want to have a little bit of a lot going on in the background. Since we kind of had a lot of white here, I decided to shoot him right in front of this doorway. So that way we have something to contrast with the white. Otherwise, it would be white displacing on white, which is just white. You won't see anything. Um, like in here, you really can't see his shoulder displacement much. But uh, in this area, this is where it kind of pops out. So when you're shooting your footage, that's something you want to keep in mind. What's in my background? Is there anything happening? If not, how can I add something there? If it even was like a picture frame or something behind him, just so you can see him, see it, or something like that. So something you have, you can distort. If you're distorting white, you're just going to get white. So that's something you have to keep in mind. Uh, so we have Dylan distorted here, and uh, now we're getting this all sort of, sort of distortion here. It's not necessarily distorting our just Dillon per se, it's distorting everything, it's distorting our footage. So it doesn't really take into effect uh, our key light effect here, but uh, uh, what you want to do is you want to use this to your advantage here. So since we've already keyed Dillon out, why don't we use the map from our key as our um, map for cutting him out? Because we want to get rid of all these sorts of artifacts happening. So what we're going to do is we're going to duplicate this layer one more time, or our actually do a person layer, duplicate it, just because that only has a key light on it. I'm going to drag that above our adjustment layer. And now what we want to do is we want to right click here on uh, anywhere in here, I'm going to go to columns, and we want to go to our modes. And uh, this is where we can set our modes, our trap max, and all that stuff. So we want to set our adjustment layer. I always forget this part. This is the 
this always messes with me. Alpha man, yes, beautiful. So what is happening here is wherever uh, this layer, this keyed out layer here is visible, so basically just Dillum, show the layer below it. So our displacement map. Uh, if we did it to inverted, it will show everything but the area that has been distorted. So uh, we're going to use that to cut out all those extra stuff and we just want to see Dillum. We just want to see Dillum, although we technically cannot see Dillum. This is going to be a funny, interesting tutorial. Anyway, um, so we've cut him out, and there you go. We've had, we have him invisible. Uh, but right currently, he's just invisible. He's been invisible and whatever. How do you transition? Is, so this is really up to you, how you have your character or object transition into invisibility. I just had Dylan explode because, you know, uh, I, I think that's pretty cool. So uh, we're trying to map off, and we want our person. And we're going to bring this all the way to the top of our composition. And uh, why do I always land in this frame? Uh, so we have Dylan here standing like this. And what we want to do is I'm gonna, I just look for uh, different things. Uh, I tried uh, Scatterize effect. Scatterize. CC Scatterize. And I'm not sure if this is in later after version of effects. I'm pretty sure it's in CS6 because that's where I originally did this effect. I'm in CC 2014. No. Yes. No, CC. I don't know. Something like that. Um, so... Uh, but there's other options. You can do many different things here. And also, I did let Dylan... I asked him to wear a plain shirt, but this actually worked out much better because of all the different lines. It adds for a more interesting effect. If it was just plain shirt, you wouldn't have much displays, per se. So keep that in mind. If you have designs on your shirt, those come out pretty well. You just want to have too much because of more raying and whatnot on your footage. But that's also something you should keep in mind. So now we have this CC scatterize, and he explodes right there. So I'm going to set a keyframe for a scatter. And all right, I'll right and left twist. And uh, we're going to jump back a little bit. And we're going to set, we're going to hit U to find all our keyframes. We're going to set keyframes again. Go back to those keyframes. And we'll just bump up our scatter and our twist. And so this is also a 3D effect. So if you had a camera, you can actually rotate in 3D. Look at that. Look how that is. So we're actually twisting here, right? So I was using this to do almost like a 3D explosion kind of effect. Uh, so you can, so if Dillum rotates in this particular way, why is he doing that? Oh yeah, he's, the footage, It's the twist is happening before he explodes. Uh, so we want to slide this forward and move that forward as much as possible and our scatter didn't keyframe okay sorry I just enjoy that and we're just gonna bump it up a lot and there we have this right and what I did was I actually added a fast blur to it uh, this is all you know up to you how do you want it? you want to have a wave effect uh, not a fast blur Yes, it was a fast blur. No. No, it wasn't a fast blur. What other blurs are there? I didn't use a fast blur. I used a... Uh, vector blur. That's it. And I cranked it up a little bit. Um, and then I just dropped the transparency. Because you get these almost lines-like effect, and that's what I really wanted. Something that wasn't necessarily... Uh, a little bit more unusual or an organic and uh, I'm just going to keyframe our opacity here just to you know make sure he's invisible before he, he's visible again or invisible or whatever see now I don't know what I'm saying uh, go forward set that to zero and I just did that really weird but now we have this going on kind of an explosion. Uh, I want to turn that blur down a little bit. Let's just get rid of the vector blur. I kind of like the lines out there. Let's just... Pew, right? He just explodes and goes invisible and then he's invisible. There you go. And that's how basically I did the invisibility effect. It's a little bit... It's a lot different from what everyone else is doing. They're finding creative and interesting ways of bringing the characters off the screen. But it's not necessarily... I mean, like, it is... For someone who's on a really doing quick 
film or whatever uh, I think that effect works but if you want to take it to the next level and you know kind of wow your audience like wow they put a lot of work into this that effect is really cool or something I think this is the route you would want to go where you you can see your your character you see this all the time in Hollywood I'm not going to take complete credit for this effect um, where they you can see your character and whatnot even when they're invisible but uh I think this is an interesting and fun fun thing to do. You know, try it out for yourself. See if you like it. Uh, you can do a lot more cool and fun things. You can see your character's reaction when they're invisible and stuff like that. So, uh, yeah, that's it for this tutorial. Uh, thank you for watching. If you really liked it, if you think this is something new, if you've seen someone do this before, let me know. Uh, share it. Uh, if you like stuff like this, let me know in the comments below because I, I really enjoy doing stuff like this. Uh, I'd like to do a lot more if you guys would like. Um, yeah, and just let me know. So that way we can find if you guys want me to look for different effects or remake new effects or find out cool stuff. I can do that. That's that's why I'm here because we're dysfunctional, right? We're family. Um, so yeah, that's it for this story. If you really enjoyed it, let me know. Uh, comment, like, subscribe, share it. Uh, if there's other After Effects or um, YouTube channels out there, uh, share it so that way they can uh, get, give me some feedback. What is going on? <laughs> I don't know what happened there. That's it for this episode, folks. I'll see you next time. Escaping prison, he took refuge in that house. And then after police found out that he was there this whole time, he cursed the house so that it would be uninhabitable and then he killed himself. It's been abandoned ever since. I'm gonna you can escape. Hey, can. Mm -hmm. So, wanna go check it out? Uh, well, uh, I was gonna call you, but. But then Carl saw me. Oh god, Carl. Yeah. Uh, but you know what? It was for the best. I mean, if anyone was gonna die, I'd rather be Carl than you know you, my, my somewhat close, casual acquaintance. Thanks. Welcome. You know what? Whatever. Turned out well. I'm back. He's back, and we got something pretty freaking cool. Let me guess. Uh, ancient artifacts. Uh, Ebola. <laughs> A job, maybe. No. Invisibility! That is a What? What? That's awesome! What did Carl get? He's blind. Yes! That's red. Right. It's functional! Oh.